Welcome back. We've been talking about modulation and dealing with pivot chords using common chords, chords that are the same in the first key that you started off in and the second key that you're going and modulating to. But there's other modulatory techniques other than using a diatonic common chord. So to review, step one when analyzing a modulation and figuring out how to do that is to find the point of modulation. What is exactly does that mean? It's the first chord that relates only to the second key, not in your original key. So for example, if you're in the key of C major, you're moving along, and then the first time you find a D major triad. So let me say that again. You're, you're going along in C major, all of a sudden you get a D major triad. This might be signaling that you're going to be going to the key of G major. That first D major triad, which has an F sharp in it, which is not in your original key of C major, this is most likely your point of modulation. Is it guaranteed? Sadly, no. It could be a secondary function that then you just quickly return to C major. But if you have that F sharp note, let's say in a, in a D major triad, and then you clearly go to the second key, that would be the first chord that relates only to the second key. Maybe not even only, it might not be the best word, but relates directly, let's say. But that's what you're looking for. A chord that's in the new key, not in the original key. That's your point of modulation. Once you've done that, you back up one chord, so the chord that comes right before that, and that's probably your pivot chord, your common chord. And we've talked about how that it can often be a diatonic common chord. It's, that's used frequently, and the reason for that is it allows the modulation to feel very smooth. You just kind of just flow right into your new key. However, that's not always the effect you want. And there's other ways and other techniques. So the first new modulatory technique we're going to call using an altered chord as a common chord. So instead of having diatonic, so if we were to use our example, if we're in C major and we then go to an A minor triad to a D major triad. You can say D major, here's my point of modulation. That's that's going to be in my key of G. This chord right before it, backing up one, this A minor triad belongs to both the key of C major, it's a six chord in C, and it's a two chord in G major. And then I just can analyze this D major, major triad as a five chord in G. So that's step two right here, right? Here's step one, point of modulation. Step two, back up one chord. And because this A minor triad is common to both the key of C major and G major, it is called a diatonic common chord. Now, what if we find our point of modulation, we go back one, and it doesn't belong to both keys? And that is entirely possible. Let's take a look at an example that does exactly that. We're in the key of G major. I have a D7 to G to A minor to A7 to D. So, first step. One, where is the point of modulation? In other words, where is the first chord that's not diatonic to the key of G major? A7. That is my point of modulation. Right? Then you could say, oh, I'm going to go back one. A minor. Well, A minor is not common to D major and, and G major. It's not. Right? So if we're going to analyze this, this would be 5, 7, 1, 2. We're out of luck, right? This, this, this is not in, in, our, in our key. This would be 5 in D major. D would be 1. So we can't use this as a pivot chord in our key of D major. So what do we do? Well, we have to, this should be 5, 7, 
we have to move it here. So it might look at what what's at first looks as, as our point of modulation might actually become our pivot chord. Now let me rewrite this a little neater. So this chord right here, this A7, does not belong here. We could call it 5-7 of 5 in the key of G, which would be 5 in the key of D going to 1. So in this case, we have an altered chord that is a common chord. So a secondary 5 or 5-7 five chord and 7 diminished 7, 7 diminished 7, they can be a secondary function in either the first key, the second key, or both keys. In this situation, we have a secondary function in the first key becomes a diatonic chord in our second key. The main thing for you to remember is that you can have a secondary function, which is the same thing as saying an altered chord, uh, actually, a secondary function is a specific type of altered chord as a common chord. That is possible. Secondary functions can be common chords. The trick in, in analyzing is figuring out where your point of modulation is. It might look like it's first here, but you actually end up moving it to here, to the D major, because you realize that you don't have a diatonic common chord. It must be an altered chord. So you, as you're analyzing, your first, the first thing you can say is, it's probably a diatonic common chord. And because that was so commonly used by people like Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, you're normally going to be correct. If you try to do that and you don't come up with something that makes sense, use as your second alternative, hey, maybe that's an altered chord. Maybe one of the chords, either the first one or the second one, Either, you know, or either for the, by the first, I mean the first key or the second key, is an altered chord. That's another option that could happen. But there's more. There's more options. You can even have things like uh, a sequential modulation. This is something like what I wrote here. And let me play for you on the piano kind of how this would sound. We start in C major, so I'll go, I'll do something like this, we'll go. sequential modulation. What happens is you have a, for something to be sequential, it has to be both harmonically a sequence, meaning a repeated pattern, the pattern has to repeat harmonically, and melodically. So I play for you, dun, 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 right? I played this kind of rhythm, half, quarter, quarter, half, quarter, quarter. And if this is the key of C major, so let's analyze this. And how do I know that this is the key of C major? Well, this right here is a 6-4 chord. 1, 6, 4, 5. Whenever you see a, like 1, 6, 4 is such a common uh, cadential function that when I see a 6-4 chord, I'm like, oh, this is probably 1-6-4, especially because this comes on a strong beat. So I say, okay, this is C major, 1, 5, 7, 6, to 4, major 7, to 5, 6, of 5, 1, 6, 4, 5. And then, the same pattern. But now, 1 in, D, in the key of D minor, 5, 7, 6. Here we have the 5, 6 of 5, 1, 6, 4, 
5. So you can see that this is almost exactly the same harmonically. And I played the same melodic shape of the third, dun, dun, down to the fifth of the five, seven, dun, dun, down, down by step. And I did the same pattern here. So it was melodically the same pattern and harmonically the same pattern. This is what's called a sequential modulation. You might say, though, uh, uh, and there's certain circumstances where, in this case, what I wrote here, that it could be with or without a common chord. So, if this is our modulation, you could say, well look, D minor is a two chord in C major and a one chord in D minor, right? So our, our point of modulation is right here, the A7, because that belongs in the key of D minor, not in the key of C, and we clearly move on to a half cadence, we even got a one chord there in our D minor, so couldn't we just, you might be asking me this, Dr. B, couldn't we just use this D minor chord here as a diatonic common chord? And I would say, yeah, but it wouldn't make, it wouldn't be as insightful as we'd want, because your ear is going to hear this four measure phrase and then it's going to hear this four measure phrase and it's going to sound like here's a chunk and then we just moved up a step and we modulated. Your ear is going to hear the modulation is happening here, not here, because the sequential nature is more powerful. So we, we don't really talk about it as common chords when you have something so clearly part of a sequence. So that's another, it's another one where the, the, the question you're asking is what's the most insightful? What do human beings hear? How does a person actually hear this? So one of the challenges is, is, is trying to listen to music and figuring it out. This example, this chord progression comes from a piece by Franz Schubert. And so this is what, kind of what Schubert did. And when you listen to it, everyone says, oh yes, right here, that's where the modulation starts. Because the sequence is so clear. Common techniques for sequential modulations. Up a step, which is what we had here. Another common, down by step. So you could have a whole chord progression, and then move the whole thing down a step. So you remember I talked about power of the scale? This is kind of an example of that. The other is circle of fifths. So you might do the sequence in C, if you're going to go through the circle of fifths, the next one might be an F. So those are the more common, but there's other options. Schubert and other examples will go up in thirds and then work his way back to his home key. So there's a lot of options. So as you're listening to the music of these masters, keep in mind all the different modulatory techniques that they've employed. Diatonic common chord, which we talked about previously, altered chords as common chords, sequential modulation. But there's more. Modulation by common tone. Not by common chord, by common tone. A singular note. People like Beethoven, even Mozart, love this. They love it because it's often very dramatic. Whereas using a diatonic common chord is usually, the idea is to smooth out the transition so you just kind of flow. And if you're not listening carefully, you might not even realize you modulated. But very often when you do a modulation by common tone, you're actually signaling to the listener, something new is going to happen, get ready. Let me show you a little bit about what that might sound like. So in this example, let's say we start in B minor, so here's our key.
is I had my five chord, and then I just started playing F sharp. And you know something's gonna happen, right? It's like something's gonna happen, and now I'm in another key. Now, I didn't write what key it is, because I want you to think about it for yourself. Five scale degrees. Notice I use the carrot here. Scale degree five in the key of B minor is what pitch? The answer is F sharp. And I'm saying that F sharp is our common tone. It's three in what key? In this case, it's going to be D major because we're going to a one chord in a major key as indicated here. So you can figure out, well, what's scale degree three when we go right to a one chord. So that's how we got from B minor to D major by a common tone. Often tends to be very dramatic or suspenseful. Not meant to be smooth and, and unnoticeable. Another technique monophonic modulation. We're not going to talk a lot about this because we're, we're really focusing in on chord progressions. But if you take a look at a Bach violin partita or cello suite, which are solo instrument, violin, normally just playing one note at a time, not chords. But the melody and the scales being used imply chords. So for a monophonic modulation, the emphasis of new pitches that are not diatonic. So for example, if you're moving along in the key of, let's take our old key here, uh, B minor. And you're hearing lots of A sharps because that is your raised leading tone in the key of B minor. And then all of a sudden, you start hearing lots of A naturals and a more, and these A's keep going to, let's say, the note D. You might say, ah, we've probably moved to the key of D major now. You don't hear a chord, but the, the monophonic, meaning one pitch at a singular time, the monophonic melody is implying harmonies, and so you very carefully indicate that. Actually, for this is something that you kind of talk a lot about in jazz improvisation because you're looking for the notes that change between chords. And so as, as a saxophonist or trumpet player or, or a pianist just playing right hand, you, when you change that A sharp to the A natural, that half step difference, you're pointing out, you're making it really clear to the listener that you've changed your perspective, your key scheme. So this is a technique that's both used uh, in classical music and throughout many, many different styles, jazz included. Our last modulation technique, direct modulation. Here there's often no attempt to be smooth. And this is the last choice you should look at. So if you're looking at trying to analyze something, your first choice is diatonic common chords. Your second choice is altered chords as common chords. Then sequential modulation. Modulation by common tone is really easy to see, right? Because it's, it's the only one that has just one note. Monophonic modulation, we're not going to deal with a lot because we're analyzing chords. But direct modulation is your last resort. Common techniques. When you do find it, it's often what's called a phrase modulation. So it's similar to what we did here with a sequence, okay? So we had a phrase. Um, phrases are typically how many measures in length? Four. So one, two, three, four measures in length. In this case, it was a sequential modulation because I kept the same harmonic pattern, sequence, as well as melodic. But if I didn't do that, Let's say I just went straight to D minor without keeping that. It would be a phrase modulation. So if I change, let's say, instead of going here and following the same sequences of one, five, seven, six, like I do here, here, instead I went, let's say, 
Uh, let me give a good example here. Let's say I went one, three, four, one, six, four, five, one. So let's say my first phrase was what we had here for our example in sequential modulation of 1, 5, 7, 6, 4 major 7, 5, 6, 5, 1, 6, 4, 5. And then I just end of that 4 major phrase, just started right here in D minor, went 1, 3, 4, 1, 6, 4, 5, 1. It's not a sequential modulation because the harmonies aren't the same, and let's say the melody is not the same as well. But it could be a phrase modulation. That's, that's a common technique. And here as well, just like we said before, it could be with or without a common chord. Remember how for sequential modulation we said, although that might happen, it's really not insightful. The same can be true here, where you have a clear ending of a phrase, and then a clear new phrase that's instantly in a new key. The phrase structure overrides almost everything. So even if there is a common chord, the human ear will not hear that. It'll hear the phrase structure as being more important than, oh yeah, we've got a common chord that's, you know, the first measure of our new phrase. This is, Johann Sebastian Bach uses this frequently. What's nice with Bach, and makes it easier for, for you all analyzing, is that he'll often end, end a phrase with a fermata. And then he'll start up. So he'll, he'll be in one key, cadence, and then boom, start in a brand new key right after the fermata. That's a little hint for you to look, look for. Sometimes they make it easy. They put a fermata at the end of the phrase. And you have a phrase modulation. Very uncommonly, you'll have a direct modulation within the phrase. This is your last resort. This is like if you can't find any other explanation of how you got to your new key. You could say it's a direct modulation. It's just kind of like dramatically happens out of the blue. So what, I, what you now have is a hierarchy of different modulatory techniques. What to look for when you analyze. That's pretty much what we're what you should be working on right now, and then when you're comfortable with analyzing different modulatory techniques, so looking at some music by Schubert or Bach or Mozart or Beethoven, once you get comfortable seeing how they use modulation and the different techniques they use, then it is a good idea for you all to try to compose a piece, a short passage, that uses all of these different techniques and see what you can come up with. Enjoy.